Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Sox is Francisco Barrios, whose record is 10 and 10 with a 4.46 ERA. And pitching for Detroit is Dave Rosma, whose record is 12 and 8 with a 4.60 ERA. And so we lost yesterday's game. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is it's September call-up day. And so uh, the video that I put out after yesterday's game is a uh, summary video of the league leaders and the standings. And I went over our roster and discussed um, not only the September call-ups, but also uh, my strategies for what I plan to do with all of the the Tigers that are going to be free agents or are going to arbitration. Uh, so it's a pretty fun video. Um, take Feel free to check it out. But uh, go, moving on to today, uh, we are five and a half games back. We're in um, trouble. Uh, we're probably going to have to win at least 18 to 20 games in order to catch the Yankees if they continue on the same pace. So um, it doesn't look good for us, but... Um, you know, this is this is the best we have to offer. Um, I am here's the bullpen. So let's just look at this real quick. Uh, George Capizello and my closer Aurelio Lopez are not available today, but that's all right. We have a ton of players available, including Shot Sater is called back up, and uh, Dan Petrie, and we've brought up uh, Bruce Robbins who uh, did pitch in 1979, and uh, in 1980 he did make a few innings as well. Uh, he was a very highly uh, thought of prospect for Detroit that didn't really pan out, um, but he is on the roster, and everybody else uh, has played already. So he's really the only new name. And then here we are with the lineup today against the righty Francisco Barrios. Uh, Kirk Gibson is in the lineup. He's going to be DHing today. Uh, we sit Jason Thompson, who's listed as sore. Um, and we sit Carlton Fisk, who was listed as tired, but he's just horrible. And uh, why not give Gibson a shot? We do have four other Tigers in the lineup that are listed as tired. So that could prove challenging. As we take a look at the uh, White Sox lineup, nobody knew there today. But we're going to go ahead and do the lineup rundown. Over here, you'll see the 1980 Tops card that best represents that player. Betting leadoff and playing third base is Joe Gates. Betting second and playing first base is Mike Squires. Betting third and in center field is Chet Lemon. Betting cleanup and catching is Marv Foley. Betting fifth and in left field is Ron Pruitt. Batting sixth and in right field is Rusty Coots. Batting seventh and DHing is Henry Cruz. Batting eighth and at second is Jerry Harrison. And batting ninth and at shortstop is Greg Pryor. On the mound for Detroit is Dave Rosema. He lost his last start, but he has uh, he did win the previous five starts before that. He's been pitching pretty well of late. 12-8 and eight as a uh, number five starter. We'll take that. He did miss one start this year. But otherwise, he um, has made every start for Detroit. And uh, he's got a 460 ERA, not a strikeout pitcher, and he doesn't walk very many either. Opponents are betting 280 against him and no complete games. He is a five to six inning starter. So we will get into our bullpen today. And here's Joe Gates leading off the game, batting 313 versus righties. And he pops it up on the infield. Whitaker has it for the first. Oh, he drops it. Come on. That's not fair. So an error on Whitaker puts the speedy Gates on first base. There's a good chance he's going to score this inning. That's just kind of how it goes. As, uh, yeah, Squires gets a base hit under the glove of Wagner at short. So first and second 
for Chester Lemon. Try to turn two here if we can. As he grounds it to Trammell at first base today, and we do turn two as Gates advances to third. So with a runner on third base and two down, the lefty Mar Foley comes up. He's a 314 hitter versus righties. And Rosemo walks Foley, which is maybe not a bad idea, so that he can face the righty Ron Pruitt, batting under 250 versus righties. And Pruitt's going to pop it up to Whitaker. Let's hope he gets this one. Yes, he does. So the Tigers get out of the, uh, the first inning uh, unscathed. And we go to the bottom of the first. Here's the Tigers lineup for today. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second. And at first base is Alan Trammell. Batting third and in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting cleanup and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting fifth and in right field is Gary Hancock. And batting sixth and DHing today is Kirk Gibson making his season debut. Batting seventh and in center field is Tony Armis. Batting 8th and at 3rd base is Richie Hebner. And batting ninth, and at shortstop is Mark Wagner. On the mound for the Sox is Francisco Barrios. And he's making his 32nd start. He's 10-10 and 10 with a 4.46 ZRA. Um, not much of a strikeout pitcher. He's a little bit wild. He's got 104 Ks and 204 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 276 against him. No complete games, which is unusual. Um, and we've covered him before in a previous series and um, his um, very sad ending to his career. He um, was really big into drugs and unfortunately he had a heart attack and died at a very young age. And uh, you can read all about him or, or watch one of our, the previous start that he had against Detroit in which he got a no decision, uh, but he gave up 10 hits and uh, six earned runs. So Whitaker leads off by lining it to the shortstop which is uh, Greg Pryor so one down here's Trammell Trammell strikes out swinging that's the first K for Barrios and Kemp pops it up on the infield and who's gonna get the catcher or the pitcher the catcher so Foley makes the catch and we go to the top of the second one two three inning for Barrios and Rusty Koontz will lead off the second inning with a base hit to left. And runner on first. So both innings so far, the uh, Sox have led off the game, led off the inning with a hit. And now it's back-to-back -back with Henry Cruz. And Koontz must have been a hit and run because Koontz takes third on the single to left. So here's the switch hitter, Harrison. We're going to pull the infield in and try to prevent that run from scoring. We need to prevent all runs from scoring. As Harrison strikes out. So now I'm going to bring in uh, the third base only. And if it's hit to him, he'll go home. And uh, otherwise, we'll try to turn two. Number nine hitter Greg Pryor's up. And I don't know what happened. That was a strike. And nobody did anything. So third base is still in. We're not in pitch by pitch mode. That I don't know what's going on there. And Pryor strikes out. So back to back K's and Rosma is on the verge of getting out of this jam. Here's Joe Gates. Safe on the air by Whitaker. And uh, we're going to bring the outfield in. So there are no bloopers into the uh, outfield grass. And it, Gates rips it to right, and it falls in for a sing single, even though I had everybody pulled in. That makes no sense, but it's an RBI single for Gates, one nothing White Sox. Here's Mike Squires. No power for this first baseman, but he's batting 317. And Gates steals second base. That's his 40th steal on the year. And first base is open. 
But we got we have two outs, so we, we're going to pitch to uh, Squires. And there's that bloop in the center field, falls in for a hit, and two runs score. So it's three to nothing, Sox, and we are in trouble. This is a, like the worst case scenario as Lemon gets a hit to left field at six hits against Rosma, who's been so reliable. Foley grounds it to short, and that ends the inning. So the Sox put a three spot on the board. We head to the bottom of the second inning, three nothing. Lance Parrish leading off the inning. He strikes out. So one down for Gary Hancock. He has a home run against Barrios. And he gets a base hit into center field. We're not going to stretch it. And here it goes. Here's Gibby taking a look at his uh, ratings. He's not as, uh, as good as he was in real life yet. But, um, oh, man, he hits a line drive right to short in his first step out of the year. That's going to leave it up to Tony Armas, who's just been terrible. A pass ball by Fo uh, Foley advances Hancock to second. And here's Armas, who strikes out looking. So we go to the top of the third. Three to nothing. Ron Pruitt leading off the inning. Pruitt grounds it to second base. One down. Next up is Rusty Kuntz. And Koontz hits a fly ball to left field. Caught by Kemp. There's the second out. Next up is Henry Cruz. And Cruz hits it off the bat into left center field. Off the end of the bat is what I meant to say. And uh, that's the end of the inning. So one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Richie Hebner leading off. Hebner hits a fly ball to center. One out. Here's Mark Mark Wagner getting um, a lot of play lately. As he gets a base hit to right, I mean, he's doing really well in limited duty. I'm going to say no. And we're going to let Whitaker swing away. Whitaker is one of the, oh man, one of the Tigers that's listed as tired. And ends the inning as Whitaker grounds into a double play. So we've got nothing going on here. As we head to the top of the fourth, still three to nothing. Harrison strikes out. That's the third strikeout for Rosma. As we pointed out earlier, he's not a strikeout pitcher. Pryor hits it the other way for a base hit. So runner on first. Here's Joe Gates. One for two today. And Gates grounds it right back to Rosemo, who turns and fires to second. So we get that lead runner. That's two down. And the speedy Gates on first once again. Squires grounds it to third, and that's the end of the inning. So to the bottom of the fourth. Trammell leading off the inning. And there's a base hit to left field. So we got the leadoff runner on, and I, I want to hit and run, but I also just want someone to come through in the clutch. As Kemp grounds it to second base, Trammell does take second. The only play was to first. So one out, runner in scoring position. Parrish pops it up onto the um, outfield grass. It's caught by the second baseman, Harrison for the second out. It's Gary Hancock. He strikes out swinging, so nothing. We might have to start playing some small ball just to make something happen here. Chet Lemon leading off the top of the fifth, and he hits it pretty deep in the center field, 400 feet, where it's caught by Armis for the first out. So one out. Here's Mar Foley. Foley hits a ground ball to Wagner. And that is the second out. So two down. Here's left fielder Ron Pruitt. 
Pruitt strikes out swinging. So to the bottom of the fifth, Barrios is at 51 pitches. He's been efficient. Here's a second shot for Gibbs, Gibson, and Gibson hits a pop fly, which makes it to the outfield. It's caught by the right fielder for the first out. So one down, and Armis strikes out swinging. So five strikeouts for Barrios, totally in control. Hebner hits the ball down the left field line. It's only going to be a single. So runner on first base, Mark Wagner comes to the plate, pops it up to second. Harrison has it for the third out. So to the six, Rosma, 79 pitches. He's been keeping it together since the second inning. Oh, I should not have said that. Rusty Koontz hits a home run to uh, the, one of the deepest parts of the park. 416 feet, it's four to nothing. White Sox. And Cruz hits a frozen rope to center. Armis has it for the first out. And we can feel the season slipping away. There we go. That is long gone too. Five nothing Sox as there's been two home runs this inning. And uh, we're going to let Rosma pitch to Pryor. And then we're going to bring in the lefty. As Pryor grounds to short. There's the second out. And that's going to be it for Rosma. Uh, a terrible, terrible outing. Not helped at all by his defense. We're going to bring in Bruce Robbins. Being down five runs. Here's Bruce Robbins. He did pitch in 1979. If you can hear my uh, neighbor's dog, it's not Bark in the Park Day. It's just my neighbor. Um, so he, <laughs> he's 19 years old, and he made eight starts in 1979. Three and three with the 391 ERA. Um, walks and strikeout ratio, not good. Uh, opponent's batting 260. And uh, he you know, had 15 starts in AA, 11 in AAA. You can see he was pretty decent. So he's got nothing to lose to come in today and uh, get a little bit of experience here with Joe Gates leading off the inning. Uh, I'm sorry, two down is what I, I should say as Gates grounds the third. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Not much to uh, get excited about for the Tigers. Only four hits so far. Whitaker leading off the inning. Grounds ball to second. One out. Trammell's up next. Trammell hits it the other way for a base hit. That's two hits for Trammell today. And we're going to hit and run. Let's get these guys moving. We're down five runs as Kemp does get a base hit to center. Trammell takes third. And we have the makings of something. I don't know what. Just do something, even if it's wrong. Parrish grounds it to second. That was wrong as the inning's over. And we head to the top of the seventh. Bruce Robbins, we're going to keep him in there. Squires is going to get an infield hit. So runner on first for Chet Lemon. So this is going to be a tough one for Robbins. He throws a wild pitch. Squires moves to second. So 1-0 count now for Lemon. And Lemon strikes out. So we got the righty. One down. Here's Mar Foley. Mar Foley strikes out looking. So it's going to be up to Ron Pruitt to drive that run in from second. And Pruitt grounds it to Whitaker, and the inning's over. So great job by the the uh, twenty year old. And we go to the bottom of the seventh. Hancock leading off the inning. He's three for five against um, Barrios with a home run, but he just rolls it down to first base 
for the first out. Here's Gibby. He's 0 for 2 today. Oh, he hits it sharply to left. That's the second out. And the completely worthless Tony Armis. He hasn't even hit a home run since he's uh, been on the team. And that's the third out as he sends it to center field. So, good job by uh, Robbins. We're not going to stretch him any further. We're going to give him that 1.1 innings of confidence. And let's pitch um, Dan Petrie, who has been back and forth. Um, statistically, he made eight starts this season. One win, two losses, 493 ERA. Um, gave up a ton of hits and a ton of walks. Uh, opponents are betting 305 against him. Not what you want from your starting pitcher. Let's see if he learned anything down in the minors as uh, Rusty Kuntz pops out to Wagner at short. So one down. Here's Henry Cruz. And Henry is a serial killer as he hits it into right field bleachers for the third home run for the Sox today. So it's six to nothing, and <laughs> Harrison walks. I'm guessing Petrie did not learn anything. We have some lefties coming up. Greg Pryor pops it up on the infield. Actually, it's caught on the outfield grass by Whitaker. So six nothing with two down. And we're, I mean, what's the point? We may as well let Petrie pitch to Gates, and Gates just shoots it into the gap. And that's a triple for Gates as he gets an RBI out of that. It's 7 nothing, And this is the season. This is what it sounds like as <laughs> when doves cry. As Squires gets an infield hit and Gates with the speed does not go home. Wow. All right. So here's a chance for uh, Petrie to get a righty out at least. Lemon grounds it to short, and that is the third out. Another two runs on the board. It's seven nothing for the Sox, and this is this is bad. I mean, now we're getting hits in the eighth inning. That's a little too late. Too little, too late, as they say. But maybe the game doesn't want um, Barrios to get a shutout. I don't know. Wagner pops it up to short. There's one out. Next up is Sweet Lou. Lou's 0 for 3 today. Grounds it to third. And, oh, I thought that was going to be the fourth double play. But Hebner beats it out to second. He stands there on second as uh, Trammell. Grounds it to third, and that is the final out of the inning. We go to the ninth. I mean, we may as well keep Petrie in there. We're down 7 nothing already. Base hit for Foley, leading off the inning. That's his first hit of the game. Next up is Ron Pruitt. He flips it into right center field. And it falls in for a hit. Oh, this is brutal. So first and second, nobody out for Rusty Kuntz. Kuntz walks. Oh, it's a wild pitch. Uh, everything's going wrong for Petrie. This guy is supposed to be part of our rotation next year. Um, yeah, we got to pull the infield in. And Kuntz pops, Kuntz pops it up. It's going to be caught by Whitaker. There's one down. So, um, pull the infield again, in again for Cruz. And he hits a fly ball to right, caught by Hancock. And Foley, with below average speed, will not tag up. So two down. Here's Jerry Harrison. Harrison grounds it to first. And that ends the inning. So they don't get any runs on the board. I'm looking at this over here. Look at that. Kuntz, Cruz, Harrison. Six, seven, and eight hitters. Supplying the power today. Every Sox hitter has at least one hit. And we're here in the ninth inning against Barrios, who's only at 92 pitches. He 
He's been totally dominant and efficient as he hasn't walked anybody. Kemp gets a little duck snort into right center field. Next up is Parrish. Parrish grounds it to third. There's a double play. That's the fourth of the game. And it comes down to Hancock, who does manage to get his second hit as he squeaks one through the left side. And Gibson will get one more chance this, this game. He's 0 for 3 today. And he pops it up. That should be the ball game. Yep, caught by the center fielder. And that's it, we lose seven to nothing. I mean, we totally laid an egg that game. And, uh, and we lose Jim Bibby for the whole month. But not for the playoffs, if we happen to make it that far. But I'm not counting on it as um, that's a rough inning, a rough uh, go. Maybe we move Robbins into the position, I don't know. But I uh, will take a look at the standings. Oh, that's the National League. There we go. So the Yankees lost as well. We've missed an opportunity to close it to four and a half. As we said, five and a half back. Um, let's take a look at transactions. Whoa, a lot of contract negotiations going on right now. As uh, the Braves sign Silvio Martinez to a three-year extension. Doug Capella gets a three-year extension with the Cubbies. Paul Moscow, actually, let's just say the Moscow, the Twins, U Urea of the Cardinals, Clancy of Toronto, all get three-year extensions. And there's the injury to Bibby. He's got a broken finger. So we'll pop the box score. We'll get out of here. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. Like and subscribe. I wish the game was better. But, uh, you know, we can't predict these things. This is loading up here, taking a sweet time. And I guess we have to give the player of the game to, um, I don't know. Let's give it to Bruce Robbins. No hitter deserves it. Um, look at all those grounding into double plays. Rosema gets his ninth loss. Uh, he's 12-9 and nine now. And Barrios, the complete game shutout, totally dominant. Uh, he's 11-10 and 10 on the year. And those, there's the three home runs. So not the best game for Detroit. We have a day off tomorrow. And then we go to Minnesota. So uh, we'll take the day off and try to regroup. And we'll be back. Uh, everyone, have a great night.